for the Big 550 KTRS here in St. Louis. Thank you very much, McGraw. How are you doing today? We're great. How's the hair doing? The hair's doing all right. I, I'm, I'm holding on to it. It's it's a little shorter than I like. You have gone a little shorter over the years. Well, you know what it was? It was it, it's all those stupid directors you have to work with, yeah. and they all want your hair. Like, can you make it dark? Can you make it light? I just did this film with, with Winona Ryder. It's not a film. It's a, a Netflix series. And and we we made it white as a is a Hanes t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing a mad scientist. So we thought that that would look good. To, I thought it kind of looked, made me look like the, the doctor in back to the future. Oh, was his yeah. Name. yeah. Um, uh, Emmett Brown, Dr. That Emmett Brown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get to uh, your things. Let's first start with that. A Winona Ryder series. That's going to be on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. It's going to come out in July. All right. And it's, you... a, it's a cool show. It's like, if you took, if you took, uh, Back to no, not Back to the Future. If you took uh, Stand by Me, E.T. and Poltergeist and put it in a blender hmm. and pour it out, that, that'd be that's kind of what Stranger Things is like. All right, like all right. Well, that's going to be on Netflix. All right, I want to talk about this documentary you're involved with, The Brainwashing of My Dad. This sounds fantastic. Well, this yeah, this is a, a, a girl named Jen Senko who's the director and documentary filmmaker. She was wondering why her, her dad was turned into such a jerk. You know, he, he was such a loving father, which, which she described as a Kennedy Democrat. And he, he just started becoming this really stubborn person who didn't like, you know, he called women feminazis if they were asking for equal pay or, or any kind of fem, feminist rights. Um, and she just didn't understand what, what had happened to her father. So she thought, I'm going to make a documentary about him. And as she was doing her crowdfunding, on Kickstarter to raise money to make the film, she started getting uh, messages from people all over the United States who said that this happened to their mother, this happened to their father, the brother, the sister. And so this isolated incident she thought was just happening with her father was in fact happening across the United States. And as she did her research in making the documentary, she found that it was from a steady diet of conservative talk radio and, and uh, you know, things like Fox News and Bill O'Reilly and... and uh, you know, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, that 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 the that steady diet of that stuff not just causes people to to think differently, but it actually causes a chemical reaction in the brain. That's that's the the science part of the film. So it's it's an interesting film. And what was interesting to me about it, what was important about it, was that the country that that we grew up in, um, that the ability for people to be able to reach across the aisle was so important, you know, to do what was right for the country. I don't care if somebody's a Republican or a Democrat. I want them to do what's best for the country. And that, that, that's missing from, from the, the, the discussion today, is that the people just don't reach across the aisle. We just have to look at those, uh, you know, when the president comes in, speaks to the, the Congress, and, and people just sitting on their hands and not... When the president says something that's good for the country and they just refuse to to acknowledge it, not, not applaud for it. It's a great question, Matthew Modine, because uh, you start to ask someone, are you a Democrat or are you an American? And, you yeah. know, oftentimes they, they, they identify with their party more than their country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so where is that documentary going to be? Well, it's available on all those video platforms now. You can get it on iTunes and, uh, you know, all, Hulu, all those kind of things. It's called The Brainwashing of My Dad. Jen Senko is the director, and it's about her father, who uh, who sadly just passed away as the film was, was uh, being distributed. Uh, okay. Did, did he get a chance to see the movie? He did. He, he did see it. What he, do you think the, about the, it? The last, the last 30 seconds of the film is, is her talking to her father and, and telling him what the movie's about, and he says... Well, that sounds like a good movie. I'd like uh. to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then you're uh, directing a short movie, Super Sex. I don't know if I like the sound of that, Matthew Modine. Oh, it's fantastic. All it's right. a joke. It's, 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 I'm in New York right now, and it's playing at the Tribeca Film Festival. All the screenings have been sold out. Uh, it's a joke uh, Eli Wallach told me. You remember Eli Wallach? Sure. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Yeah. most famously. And uh, I thought it would be a, a terrific short film obviously needed to be opened up and expanded but um i cast kevin nealon elizabeth perkins to play the brother and sister who want to who want to get something unusual for their father for his birthday and they decide what he needs is is a is to get laid and and 
so uh, they go out and hire a prostitute, uh, which is played by my daughter, Ruby Modine. And, and, uh, you cast your daughter. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. You <laughs> cast your daughter as a prostitute? Yeah, no, I didn't. She, we, she, she was the first person who read the script. Um, she's an actor and a singer. And, and she said, yeah, I think it's a really good script, and I want to play the prostitute. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, she's a good actor, so, you know, you always want to cast good people to be in your film. And, and then she, it was actually her idea to cast Kevin Nealon and Elizabeth Perkins because she'd met them on the set of Weeds and really enjoyed their company. And, and then it was the most important part, of course, was finding the right guy to play the father. And I'd met Ed Asner a few times playing poker. There's this kind of wonderful, famous poker game that takes place every Wednesday, or every other Wednesday. And, and I asked Ed if he'd, he'd like to play the part, and I told him. He goes, yeah, I know the joke. I know the joke. He goes, I got one question. Are you going to play the prostitute? And I said, well, no, why, why would I play the prostitute? And he said, because it'll make it easy for me to say no. <laughs> All right, so we'll look for that as well. That's going on. We'll look at that online here at uh, some point. Before we let you go, Matthew Modine, um, my, one of my all-time favorite movies, maybe because it was such a sweet spot for me growing up in, in high school, was Vision Quest. Um, Talk for a moment about that movie. That that movie clearly changed your life, didn't it? Oh yeah, it was uh, it was a huge film. I mean, it, it changed a whole bunch of people's lives. It introduced the world to Madonna. You know, she sang that uh, the Gambler and Crazy for You. Right. And and uh, uh, Linda Fiorentino that the played opposite. Um, it was it was. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a not just a coming of age movie for for me as a character, but it was a coming of age movie for me as a as a young man. You know, I would, I just graduated from from uh, drama school and um, I was really skinny. You know, because that's what you do when you go to drama school. You get skinny from drinking too much coffee and smoking <laughs> a lot of cigarettes. And I'd done I'd done one movie with Robert Altman called uh, Streamers, and it it won the the acting prize at the Venice Film Festival in Italy. And Harold Becker saw it, and he, he, he met with me in New York, and he said, you know, I think you're a good actor. Do you think you could do 10 push-ups? Because I was so skinny. And I said, yeah, I think I could do 11. And he, he said, you're going to have to get in shape. And he sent me to Spokane, Washington, and, and about two months before we started filming. And all those other kids in the movie were all state champions, and they just beat the hell out of me. And, and uh, I, you know, I learned to, rest, wrestling is the, probably the most difficult sport I've ever participated in because it's you really against yourself. It was a it was a it was a great movie and actually quite frankly still stands the test of time. I saw it not not too long ago and it's not a cheesy eighties movie. It actually stands the test of time. Yeah, thank you. I, I agree with you. Yeah. They keep talking about remaking it. You know, they were uh was a kid named Taylor Lautner from that uh, vampire yeah. movie. Yeah. And you can't you can't remake that movie. No, it, I want a it, sequel it, with you wrestling shoot again in the senior circuit or something. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. All right, fair enough. Uh, a couple of uh, super sex at uh, Tribeca Film Festival and his documentary, The Brainwashing of My Dad, also a Netflix series called Stranger Things. Matthew M Modine, thanks for having fun. Good luck. Thanks, McGraw. You got but it. Think about it. Think about seeing me in a singlet at 57 years old. The good point. All right, never mind. You don't want to see it. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Matthew Modine. All right. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, 